Okay, for the next part of this video, we're going to introduce uh, the concept of sensory examination. To do so, we first must go back a little bit before we go forward. We're going to examine gait, and I'm going to remind you first how to examine normal gait, and then we look at the aspects that you need from gait of how to examine the sensory system. So, uh, Peter, thank you very much for allowing us to uh, examine you today. I'm going to examine your walking, and I'm going to ask you to walk to a certain distance over there, the pillar, if you will, okay. turn around slowly, and halfway back, I want you to stop. Then I'm going to ask you to walk heel to toe, and I'll stand beside you and talk you through it. And then after that, we'll do some other tests, as we've discussed before. So, if you wouldn't mind, uh, if you just could walk slowly and naturally as you can uh, to the pillar down there, please. So what we're looking for here is the balance and the turn of a patient. We're looking for the arm swing, and then halfway back, we ask them to stop, please. And then I'm going to ask you, if you don't mind, to walk heel to toe as best you can. I'll stand beside you, because some elderly patients won't be able to do this, of course, and don't over, um, don't over ask of patients. That's fine. Thank you very much. Now, if someone has a sensory gait, uh, sensory gait disturbance, they won't be able to do that, or it'll be difficult. But the key thing in the sensory gait examination is Romberg's sign, and Romberg's has no H in it, remember. Now, could you put your feet tightly close together? In touching. Now note, he's got them in touching. This is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is right. It's a Romberg sign. And this tests three things. What keeps us up in space, as you'll recall from earlier parts of this video, is your vision, your posterior columns, which we'll test in a moment, and your vestibular system in your inner ear. We now ask uh, Peter to close his eyes, and now he's dependent to stay up, upright or steady on his vestibular system, and his posterior columns. If, for example, he has a problem with his posterior columns, through which you'll soon see run proprioception, fine touch, and vibration sense, then he'll be left with eyes closed, uh, deficit of his posterior columns, and only his vestibular system, and thus he will fall over. I'm going to just push over. He'll just tend to waver first, and he, if it's very bad, he'll fall over completely. So we ask him to close his eyes, Again, I would advise you to stand by the patient initially, particularly in exams. You don't want a patient falling over, and you keep them there. And if he doesn't fall over, give it about a minute. Don't just rush into it. And after about a minute, you say, Romberg's sign is negative. Okay, you can open your eyes, thanks. Now, as a matter of course, I would recommend that you always then ask the patient to turn to one side a little. And I'm just going to ask you to stand on your toes, and then down and onto your heels. And I run my foot gently under, under his feet, and to make sure everything's okay, and for completion's sake of the normal gait, I ask you to put your feet apart like this, okay? Now, this is mainly, these are called the writing reflexes and occur in extrapyramidal disorders, but if you do the same routine every time, you will not neglect anything. So I'm going to pull you towards me gently. Don't fall over. Don't fall over. Stay steady in your stance. So gentle one just to tell the patient what I'm doing. Now more aggressively. Don't fall over. Okay, lovely. Now I'm going to do the same from this side, and again, to warn the patient and reassure them, I'm going to pull you towards me a little bit, and now more aggressively. Try and stay in your stance. Okay. Someone with extra parameter disorder might fall over, but we'll discuss this anon. 